Hi, my name is Hildur Guðnadóttir and I am here on All Access to speak about Chernobyl and Joker and music in general. Well, Hildur, thank you so much for, for joining me this evening. Mm -hmm. It's so great to sit down and meet with you. My pleasure. Um, so to start, I would love to kind of talk about your, your background and uh, you know, maybe talk about your childhood and growing up and what were kind of the first memories you had where music kind of started sparking some inspiration in your life? Mm. Well, my whole family are musicians. So uh, my father is a clarinet player and conductor and composer and mm. runs a chamber ensemble and my mother was an opera singer and, and uh, you know, pretty much everyone is, is a musician or in some sort of health yeah. related uh, <laughs> uh, practice. But um, so I think my first um, my first actual musical memory was um, when my dad was um, was th was still uh, doing his kind of uh, master's degree in the clarinet. He was he was practicing this um, this piece called the the flight of the bumblebee. Mm, yeah. And I just thought it was hilarious, and I was like, play it again, play it again, play it again. <laughs> So I'd have my dad play the, the flight of the bumblebee like endlessly on repeat. <laughs> so I think that's my first kind of actual musical uh, memory. But and then I just you know I remember sleeping on the floor on the chamber ensemble practices and and you know so it was it was music was always like a very natural thing mm -hmm. in my environment and and uh, it meant also that it was also just very personal to me. I always related yeah. like instruments to the person that was playing it. So mm, yeah. So it always gave each instrument like a very specific character. And this is something that's been a pretty big part of my practice actually today because I choose um, collaborators very much based on, on you know, my connection to them and their character rather than what instrument they play or what kind of musical abilities they have. I, I feel like right. the personal connection is, is normally much, much more important, which is um, why my... Um, my co-workers and collaborators are normally either actual, actually related to me, they're my, my immediate family, or, you know, people that I worked with for over 20 years. Yeah, know, yeah. Keep working with. So when did you decide to make it a, a career? When, when did that kind of become a possibility? Did you go to school for music, and did you start pursuing What I guess, what did you want to be when you grew up? Was a film composition always in that path, or no? <laughs> Absolutely not, no. It was, it's actually kind of, a total coincidence that I ended up in uh, in the film film music uh, yeah. area, <laughs> um, but I guess um, well, it's kind of just like the my whole my whole uh, musical path. I've never really made a conscious decision about anything. I've just um, you know, I just I always loved music and I always loved playing it, and and then I just uh, I just never stopped. Yeah. You know, so I just kept on going and I kept on going, and I've always tried to. I've always tried to keep my curiosity kind of, you know, alive and and <laughs> and, and kicking and and uh, so I try to just kind of follow my curiosity to where it, where it wants to take me and right. and, uh, and film music was somehow like ended up on that path and then I just you know I kept on going and I kept on going <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm here. Now you're here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so your uh, so cello is your instrument, mm -hmm. right? So you became a cellist. What what, what uh, did you gravitate towards that instrument? Is that something that kind of appealed to you? What kind of appealed to you about the cello? Well, it's kind of like a um, it's kind of like a mythological uh, story about that. So so when my mother was pregnant with me, she was she uh, said that she knew immediately that this child would be called Hilter and she would be a cellist. And, wow. Um, yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty dramatic. <laughs> and uh, and she always claimed that I completely chose the cello myself, and you know she had wow. nothing to do with it. But <laughs> a couple of years ago, she was like, "Well, okay, I might have like you know, I might have just pointed it out to you, or you know, so I might have influenced it a little bit." But I had a kind of funny relationship with the cello, so I didn't, I didn't always love it. So I, oh. I was a kind of. I was never a really good um, cello student, so mm -hmm. I, I kind of, um, I had a bit of a problem with being told what to do, and I had a bit of a problem um, 
being told that there were right and wrongs yeah. in music, and this is something that's also has stayed with me my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing to have. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because I feel like, you know, I feel like music is, is just, it's a form of communication and mm. it's a form of expression, and I think there's, um, you know, apart from like hurtful speech or hurtful communication, there shouldn't really be any, any limits to what you're allowed to um, say or express, you right. know, as long as you're not hurting anyone. Yeah, you know, and, and exactly. And hopefully, you, you, you know, there's... Hopefully, don't do that with uh, with music either. Yeah. But but other than that, I think you know music should just be like a f yeah a form of free expression. And um, but but I stuck with it nonetheless all my childhood. And yeah. and um, and I'm very grateful that I did because it's been a very um, it's been a very big part of my um, musical path. And, Absolutely. Um, and I think I was about you know around. 20 or so when I realized like hey maybe I can maybe I can actually just like practice and maybe you know other <laughs> like new worlds would <laughs> open up to me and it did and so I, I kind of you know because I started when I was like around five six and then I ended up falling in love with it like in my early 20s yeah. and uh, so it's kind of um, you know it was kind of like this slightly too you know a heavy boyfriend that I was like lagging around <laughs> right. everywhere my whole childhood <laughs> like you know all of a sudden I fall in love with this you know this this uh, this thing that I've been you know Went from dating to around. a marriage yeah, exactly. And <laughs> <laughs> exactly and that only took about 20 years for it you know <laughs> get, well you know some about commitment issues it's yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> exactly well, at least I didn't give up on it because when I when I finally fell in love, it was it was a very very strong and, and deep um, deep connection. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Um, so, what were you doing? What were kind of the steps leading up to film, and what what kind of music were you? Do? I mean, you were doing kind of concert work or performing. Well, I oh sorry, <coughs> I've always tried to um, I've always tried to just keep everything open and I've always tried to explore as many outlets and as, as many um, yeah like forms of, of communication and forms of you know making music and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I've tried to just like allow myself a lot of space to, to grow within you know every every shape or form of, yeah. of uh, so so yeah I did a lot of classical music when I was when I was younger and then when I was a teenager I started playing like in pop and rock bands mm -hmm. so that's kind of where I got a um, I, I got like an outlet for my my uh, need to um, to experiment mm -hmm. and and just like you know fool around with things and you yeah. know I was, I was also always you know, singing in choirs and so I always sang a lot as well and and um, and then I started um, kind of like a Formal or, I mean, not super formal, um, electroacoustic composition mm. path. So, so that that was also in my kind of late teens that I, I started working with computers and and uh, programming and and um, yeah, more kind of like experimental music and louder music and, yeah. and more kind of like you know, like larger scale performances where. Everything was like you know on platforms moving around or, or you know kind of just I really want for that sort of um, uh, instrument building also. Mm. I've, I've I've always been really really uh, inspired by that and, and worked quite a lot with with instrument builders to expand the vocabulary of, of specifically the cello of course that being my instrument. So like building custom cellos yeah. and different designs. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, and that's always been a big part of my practice since my since my oh. late teens as well. And those instruments also feature quite a lot in my in my scores, mm -hmm. for example. And through my work as um, um, uh, when I started working more as a composer, like in my late teens, early twenties, then I started working in theater as well, and I, I really loved that because then I kind of I f I found a way to um, to work with storytelling mm -hmm. within theater, mm -hmm. which I am storytelling is something that I've always really been fascinated with and, and loved doing and um, especially with you know how you can tell stories with sound and because um, words are not really my my medium yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, uh, often get really stuck with not finding the right words or not being you know words kind of not right. really being able to express what I want to say and, and uh, yeah. so music is definitely a way better way to communicate for me than than, uh, than words so kind of with uh, 
then sort of I, I just you know through that work started to uh, slowly work in films as well and mm. I think the, I did my first feature film probably around 15 years ago and um, so it's something that I always did like off and on and I was working mostly in um, European projects or, or like more experimental theatre and, and um, so yeah so it's been kind of you know 15 years of just, just like slow cooking yeah. and, and getting to know the medium and, and um, but always doing like lots of other stuff as well so I've always been like touring and, yeah. and playing live and you know performing and experimenting and so it's kind of just all grown together in this in this <laughs> bubble of, of <laughs> whatever whatever, whatever music is, yeah. wants to be told you know but in the last years it's been um, I've been mostly uh, working in film and um, and it's uh, the focus has been kind of um, moving towards the state. So I've mostly yeah. been working on projects that have been uh, right. based here in the in the U.S. and and um, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting an interesting ride. Yeah, yeah, interesting <laughs> ride. Um, I wanted to talk about Johan, of course, for a bit because he's been such a big part of your career as well. Mm -hmm. And when what, what do you remember when you first? What do you remember about the first time you met Johan Johansson? And what, I guess, what connection did you guys have that immediately was like, this can turn into something, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we, um, I mean, we were in Iceland, of course, yeah. and Iceland is tiny, and <laughs> there's uh, not, not a lot of uh, musicians <laughs> at that time when we were growing up, and um, uh, we just, you know, we had a lot of mutual friends, and, and my father worked with Johan for uh, quite a few of his projects. So, um, so we met originally through some Kitchen Motors, um, which was like a um, uh, think tank. They called it was like a musical collective mm -hmm. that, that he was a part of, and, and I, I, you know, I was a part of a lot of um, their performances and their happenings, and and. Uh, um, so we met originally through that, and probably around, um, yeah, well, it's about yeah, about twenty years ago that we um, started to 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 play together, and um, we uh, it was uh, um, the first thing that we worked on, just the two of us was for an Italian dance piece, and. Um, yeah, I mean, our, our uh, it would kind of formed the way that we worked together because um, he would basically just, uh, you know, I would just play for him and <laughs> improvise and, and he would just say like, oh, wow, cool, oh, wow, cool. <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, that was the kind of the beginning of our, our, our working relationship and, and we worked together on pretty much every yeah. project that he did from that day onwards. That was, yeah, you guys were such a great pairing and, and yeah. you guys complimented each other so well. Yeah. And uh, I think the, the the score that people probably, for at least here in the States, I know you guys were working together on other stuff, but Mary Magdalene, um, which you co-scored with him starring Rooney Mara and Joaquin Phoenix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it was your first introduction scoring for Joaquin. Um, uh, what was it like, uh, I guess, versus playing on his scores, what was it like writing with him and having a, a companion to co-write did you guys kind of split things up did you work on every note together in the same room well and on all honesty we always co-wrote a lot together yeah so um uh i i always had the quite big um part parts of, in this of, of his yeah. uh, of his music <laughs> so the we never kind of the way we worked together it was never like as we were working it was it was never kind of um set in stone who was writing what right, and who was right. who was doing what and it just um, um although it kind of maybe didn't look like that on the on the outside on but, the yeah, um, on the billings and yeah, the cue sheets exactly, and everything exactly exactly that's <laughs> a lot of politics that, that yeah. um, goes into that but um so Mary Magdalene was really just a, it was just a you know a continuation of of the way that we work together which mm -hmm. was always just like very much uh, it was very much just like an open dialogue between between friends yeah. and, um, and uh, it was very yeah it was just like it was always very open <laughs> there were never really any um, uh, yeah constrictions on on on, uh, on what we uh, 
who did what. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you scored uh, Sicario Day of the Soldado, which I absolutely loved. And it was a very unexpected sequel. I don't think anyone was expecting a sequel to such a, you know, it seemed like a single film. And then, yeah. and then Taylor Sheridan wrote the script, and it <laughs> felt so genuine and real. And your score, I mean, it was such a thrilling film, as, as thrilling as Denis's version. Um, but um, what was, I mean, because it was an interesting situation because you're stepping in, fill, you know, kind of filling in for Johan, and of mm-hmm. course we lost him. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you took that project, did you want to, was it more about carrying kind of your guys' legacy or was it about trying to experiment new things? What, what, what was that project, what did that project mean to you, I guess, in that sense? Mm, well, I mean, of course, you know, Sicario had a really, really strong score mm-hmm. and there were some like really strong um, Themes that that has um, colored many a film since <laughs> since then. I am very composers say say that's the t- it's the new Dark Knight temp track. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's, uh, it's definitely to be heard um, in a lot of places. Yeah. Um, which is, yeah, it's it's uh, I guess you know the nature of the, the nature of the business. <laughs> the nature of the business. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, it, I mean it's always it's always a little bit. You know, it's interesting when you do sequels or, or you know, you know, movies that are a part of like a, a larger world or, you know, it's, it's, it's always kind of, you know, you have to make a pretty conscious decision like, you know, wh- what's, the, what's the take that we're going to do? Is it going to be like, you know, directly referencing the, the first one or is it going to step completely yeah. away from it? Right. Or like, you know, are we... Um, uh, so I think I think with Sicario two it was it was a pretty different story that was being told. So it wasn't it wasn't entirely the same um, like the same scoring method didn't yeah. really, it couldn't really apply to this film. Mm-hmm. And like what the director wanted to do for Sicario two was pretty different from what Denis was was trying to do. You know, because number two had a lot more kind of em- emotional elements to it and and. Um, so it kind of, um, uh, yeah, required more kind of yeah, you know, em- it emotional writing. It, it's, it, it, same, it felt in the same <coughs> neighborhood, but I mean, I don't think you quoted any of it, the original themes till the very end or something like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely nods to, mm-hmm. um, to, the, to the original one. I mean, yeah. it, it didn't completely, you know, overlook what had been done in the, in the first one, but at the same time, it just it would have been really weird to kind of try to redo the yeah. the, the first one because like obviously so many people have been trying to do that and it just didn't really work. Right. So I was like, no, I don't, I don't really want to. <laughs> I don't really want to fall in that uh, in that pit. But obviously, I was a really big part of the first score as well, and I played a lot yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did definitely play a lot of the um, the first score, so it was you know it was natural that this was also quite a large part of my own sound world. So right, so right. it was natural that that would also you know be a part of <laughs> the, the the second one so it was kind of like yeah it was like you know some in some ways like a not and in some ways you know just the, the what i was doing anyway and you yeah, know, yeah. So just continue that and in other ways you know a bit and it was different. just as engaging and thrilling and, and well made as the first one i think oh, that was great, the, yeah <laughs> um yeah. You, you also worked with johan and, and uh, another composer ruther on an icelandic series trapped i want to talk about that before mm-hmm. talking about chernobyl mm-hmm. um and the show had two successful seasons, and I guess the third one is in the works. I guess it's coming up. Um, mm-hmm. Was when you're working on a, a, a like a TV series, so mm-hmm. it's kind of similar to a miniseries. But is it hard? Is it hard to map out? I guess the whole arc of a season, or do you do you think of it as one single story for one season, or are you just focused on each episode as like its own little break and chapter? Well, I think that depends on. Um it just depends on the series, mm-hmm. really, because it just depends on what the, um, what the series is trying to do and what how they are like, you know, um, you know what what kind of story is being is being told and how it's being told and and um, trapped is is definitely you know that's a whole world in one series, you know, all the episodes yeah. are kind of like a you know it's a very kind of linear very, yeah. progression. Whereas, for example, um, Chernobyl each episode is kind of different from each other so 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 that's a little bit of a it's a, it's a bit of a different 
way of looking at it. Naturally, the music follows the same mm -hmm. path. You know, it's it's like um, although you're all, you're always going to have threads that that tie everything together, yeah. but it's it's um, um, yeah, you just have to kind of follow what the filmmaker is trying to. And it's an, it was a trap was interesting because season two it was like a three year break right between mm -hmm. seasons one and season two. Usually, you know, yeah. show keeps going. Next season yeah. we keep going. Yeah. Was that interesting to come back after that kind of break? And was it more like a refresh? to come at it brand new, or did the score kind of evolve from each season, from the yeah, previous season? Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely, it definitely mm -hmm. changed and, and evolved. But it was also like, you know, it had the elements of the, of the first, mm -hmm. of the first yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So now, you know, Chernobyl, of course, you know, we got a big Emmy night, every Emmy, Emmy weekend, you know, yeah, <laughs> this weekend. Yeah. Uh, what was, uh, I guess, the appeal of the story to you, and what did you want to bring to that series musically? What, was your, what were your goals with the score? Um, well, I th it was very important to me that the, the music was um, was connected to to the reality of the story being mm. told because the, st it's the story is very real and it's uh, you know affected thousands and millions of, of people that are still alive today and you right. know have either lost family members or are still suffering from like you know physical. Mm reactions to the radiation or, or you know so it's like it's 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 definitely something that's um it's still very tangible today and yeah. I, I think um when you're working with material like that it's really important to to be honest about what you're doing mm -hmm. and, and um and how you're telling the story and how you're approaching the story like i i was really important to me that i wasn't I wasn't creating any sort of like fantasy world. Like I, I wanted, I didn't want to like. Um, yeah, I, I wanted Sensation the music to be sensationalize kind of, it. You yeah, know. exactly. Like I didn't want to be like you know storming with any like drama strings or <laughs> like you know thriller drums or like anything. I just I, I felt that was a bit like disrespectful to what had happened. So I I, uh, I tried to um, uh, keep it as. Um, as real to the physical sensation of how I imagined being there and experiencing what what happened, and and uh, and to do that, I went to um, the power plant where the uh, series is filmed in, which is in Lithuania. Right. Um, and it's a it's a power plant that's being um, decommissioned. Mm -hmm. So I went so I went there to um, with uh, with Chris Watson, who's a field recording expert, and Sam Slater, my uh, score producer, to. To basically, you know, listen to the space and and just experience what it is to be in a space like this, and wow. to experience like what it really sounds like and what it feels like, and 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 uh, so so we did like a whole whole bunch of recordings of the of the whole space, and and um, the building blocks of the music are all based on these recordings. So so wow. uh, so. Um, yeah, so uh, elements of like you know the reactor room and the turbine hole and uh, you know the p the pump room and and you know are all in the are all in the score and um, so I tried to basically make an instrument out of a nuclear power plant. Wow, which, <laughs> which which took a bit of stubbornness to to, yeah. <laughs> to see through, but but that's basically the whole score is is the power plant and um, and the, that kind of the only instrument that's being used is my voice. So uh, my voice is like the kind of human element of the of the of the story and uh, and uh, in the emotional aspect of the of the story is told through my voice. Is there a lot of experimentation to finally to to get to the final, I guess the final version of whatever cue you're writing? Is there how do you know when it's when you have it when it's really you're kind of bringing all these elements in? Do you kind of have a picture in your head, or you're just moving things around and go, oh, this is it? Yeah, I mean this was this was definitely the most. Um, the score that required the most experimenting of all the scores yeah, that I worked yeah. on, because um, <coughs> because I had this really strong idea that I wanted the I wanted the space to have a really strong voice, but I had no idea what it sounded like. So yeah. I just I went in there with just completely open ears, and I just I went in there with uh, with no kind of preconception of what right. it was going to sound like, yeah. what I was going to get out of it. And yeah. I, but I I knew that I I didn't want to. I didn't want to manipulate it, like I didn't want to go in there and slam doors or like bang mm. on stuff or just like, you know, make the space do anything that it wasn't doing already. Um, so I really went in there just with completely, you know, open ears and open mind just to, to listen. Mm. And, um, 
That could have been the apartment. For yeah, you could, have, you could have sampled <laughs> that motorcycle. <laughs> Cute motorcycle. <laughs> um, uh, and then, of course, after those recordings um, took place, then you know, became a pretty, pretty long process of of just like going through the recordings and you know, early on just deciding what material to be used and how it was going to be used and how it was going to be processed and then processing and processing and processing and processing and you know just like bringing uh, sounds that were barely audible like down to like an audible range and, yeah. and uh, you know stretching things out and, and uh, also making um, like impulse response reverbs out of the spaces mm. so so that's kind of when you when you take a recording of a space and you can kind of turn it into a reverb so you can for example my voice was always played back into the oh, space okay. so so the, the space was always present in the mm. um, in the in the process and we yeah there was a lot of things like this that that like takes a lot of time yeah <laughs> lot i can imagine to go through <laughs> and uh, but it's it's a uh, you know it's it's a uh, it's worth it definitely oh, yeah. in the end because when you have you just you have a really strong idea but like this this project just like needs it it yeah. needs this amount of attention and it needs this amount of of just like factual effort put into it for the um, for the uh, music to be you know Absolutely. be based on, on fact. Yeah. You know. So of course now you've um, just finished up Joker, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know one of those iconic screen characters, comic characters, uh, pop culture characters of all time. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the Joker. Yeah. Um, how did you get involved with this project? How did you? I end up, you know, what, what were your, I guess, how did you get involved? And then what were your first meetings with Todd Phillips like? And what kind of conversations did you have? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, well, he just called me really? and asked if I, <laughs> if I was interested. And, That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I obviously was. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> he uh, asked if I was up for reading the script and, and, um, and making you know, music based on my feelings of the script, and, and um, I guess he, um, he, I think it was probably the music editor rather than him that, 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 um, that knew my music from, from my solo records, and, right. and, um, and they had, a, like, they've been working, to, working together for, for quite a long time, and, and uh, like, over a decade, I think, mm. and, and they had been having this discussion about, like, you know, there was, it was important for this project for the music to come in really early, and um, and the music editor Jason Ruter, he had a just really strong feeling about me being the right person for it, and and um, so hence the hence the call, I guess. Yeah. And um, so I read the script, and and I just I really loved it. I really really connected strongly to mm -hmm. it. I got a very kind of strong physical. Um, kind of almost like physical reaction to, yeah. to, to reading it and, and um, so I, I started making music based based on that and, and um, sent, sent some tracks over to Todd and he just yeah he just apparently couldn't believe that you know how I could make music out of exactly the same feeling that you know that he was trying to just from the script to, yeah <laughs> just from the script so so it was kind of like this. This uh, we we just were very much in agreement with each other from from the first day onwards. You know, it was it was um, it was just a really you know this kind of rare <laughs> rare occasion of completely agreeing with what story is being told and right. how you want to tell it and you know the direction that you want to go and and um, so it was just like a really wonderful wonderful way of of working because uh, it didn't really take a lot of um, you know, we didn't really have to do a lot of searching to find yeah. exactly that direction that we wanted. So you're all on the same page, like yeah, right off. Exactly, so yeah. not a lot of discussing and, and going back no, and forth. No, exactly, and exactly. And it was a, just really based on, really based on this kind of raw feeling of, of just like this kind of instant, instant, uh, yeah, reaction to 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 the story. Well, yeah, so yeah. what was your reaction to the story? What what gripped you about it? Well, I mean, it's it's. Um, uh, it's just uh, this this the story of this of this person that's really trying his best to kind of just like you know get along with people and and just like his you know his surroundings just like don't allow that mm -hmm. and it's and it's and it's just uh, 
you know, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, a, like, it's a dark it's, film. It's yeah, it's definitely. I'm not sure like how much I'm allowed to say about it at this <laughs> at this point, but it's you know, it really had a big, it really had a big um, emotional impact mm. on me because uh, I just I really. I really felt for him and with him and, and just like somehow like understood him. Yeah. And um, so I had like a, yeah, like a very strong, almost kind of, uh, yeah, almost it's kind of like a claustrophobic it. reaction or like a very kind of physical reaction in, the, in this, in this yeah. area. And, and um, you feel that like not that weight kind yeah, of, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, um, yeah, and it was, it was. I mean, the whole process was just so lovely because then they um, used a lot of the the music that I wrote early on uh, while they were shooting the film. So the wow. so the music really influenced, you know, quite a few uh, of the scenes and the development of of his character and and. Um, so the you know the kind of choreography of some scenes were directly taken from the tempo of the music and the feel of the music wow. and and, uh, and it's just really like a magical process when you when you have kind of sensed something like so physically you know just like sitting in your living room reading something and, and then you kind of you know you turn that into music and you don't you know I didn't have any dialogue with them you mm. know in words about any yeah. of that stuff that I experienced but. And then, you know, just seeing Joaquim, like, literally turning that into movement and, and just, like, physically embodying it on the, on, the, on the screen was just, like, such a, it was such a beautiful, did beautiful they, way of working. Did they play your music for Joaquim? Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So they played it as, as they were filming. So on the set? Time. Yeah, on oh the set. Oh, my goodness. And then he also had, like... Um, I, I came on the set to visit him, and he also had like um, uh, like ear ear yeah, with earpiece, the, yeah, yeah. earpiece with the with the music as well. So so it was. See, uh, I always thought that's like I'm I'm a huge Sergio Leone fan, and mm -hmm. you know Ennio Morricone would pre-write mm -hmm. the music, and they yeah. would play it on the set. And yeah. those scenes, I mean, when you build yeah. image, I think images, at least for me as a screenwriter, and you yeah. know, I'm writing, it, 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 I go to music to find my imagery. So yeah. it's like the circle, yeah. and then yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but the problem the problem of course when you when you when you um when you're like looking for music as inspiration when you're like, you know, working on the film or like especially like doing the edit or like, you know, gravitating towards like actually doing the scenes, mm. the, the 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 temptation is of course to or like, you know, the <laughs> The kind of trap is to get stuck in the yeah. music, and yeah. then, yeah. <laughs> of course, you know, if if the composer comes on like really late on, you know, it's just it's uh, it's always a bit of a, <laughs> of a, a struggle yeah. to replace the tap music. I and know because you're stuck. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's uh, that can be a really tough uh, tough process to, yeah. to go through. So it's it's um, I think this this way of working for me is just like such it's so, so much more creative and it's so much more fulfilling when. When the music and the and the film can really can grow together as yeah. as a whole piece of art, you know, and not one thing like kind of you know. Yeah, we're the last like second just come and lay yeah, on top, exactly, you know. It's like baked exactly. in. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's uh, and that was really the case in in this in this process, and it was really just it was it really grew together the whole the whole process because of course like you know I wrote a lot of other music like as they were editing mm. and you know so a lot of stuff was added and you know a lot of stuff grew and and was was changed and, and, and so forth. But the, this kind of growth process was really, you know, from the script on, just mm. very organic and very um, very open and there was a lot of trust and a lot of yeah. a lot of just uh, space was, was given to me and so it was um, creatively like a really wonderful um, wonderful project. That's amazing. Of, yeah. My question was gonna be how do you how how did Joaquin Phoenix uh, his performance influence you but it seems like it was the other way around where your music helped him yeah. Shape the performance and yes. character. Yeah, yeah. But when you yeah. can't, when you have to come back and kind of tweak things, what about his? I guess what did he bring that did it pull more out of you after you saw that? Definitely, the, yeah. I yeah. mean, it was definitely just like this dialogue that you know I started out doing something that he responded to, and then as you know I start to get scenes mm -hmm. that of course like I start to react to what what he's doing, and, mm -hmm. and you know so it's kind of this kind it's of back, back and, and forth. forth. Yeah. yeah. So I started to. Um, I started to get like uh, daily circles, so I, I started to get like scenes before they start editing. So I kept on writing as 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 they were just still shooting, and mm -hmm. you know, so so it was just like this really kind of, yeah, ongoing organic dialogue, <laughs> you know, with without too much um, 
which is always like really a preferred way of, of working with, for me with, without too much like you know talk about yeah, what needed much, to yeah, be yeah, done yeah, it exactly. was it was it was always like very much like based on feeling and and um, right where you're kind of, yeah yeah so yeah. i mean it's not your conventional comic book adaptation or superhero film which um you know people expect these kind of big heroic themes or big you know um the, the joker's story is very more in line with Scorsese's Taxi Driver and mm -hmm. King of Comedy and those kind of films, mm -hmm. uh, was is was there a lot of music in the film, or did you kind of res felt pull back and restrain? Like, what was I guess what was the total rate? How much music did you compose to what the final runtime was? Uh, yeah, I don't remember the final number actually, but but yeah, there's there's quite a lot of music. Mm. Music is is definitely very present, and it is pretty thematic actually. There it are, is, yeah, there, wow. yeah. There are pretty. Um, I mean, there's there's not a lot of like underscore, mm. but it's pretty, it's quite strong like theme themes yeah. like, when they when they come in. So it's definitely, it's definitely like fictional music. Yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, fictional. Sorry, it's fictional music, <laughs> and and, uh, um, and it's definitely kind of, um, or at least to me compared to Chernobyl, like you know, it's a bit more like kind of. You know, big and 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 grand. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Did you go back and listen to what other composers did with the character, like Danny Elfman or Hans Zimmer, or did you kind of stay away? And yeah, I mean, I didn't. No, I mean, I had a I had a quick skim over over some of the Batman movies, but but you know, it was always really clear. Like you know, I I, I think it was, yeah, I think it was some of the Hans Zimmer scores that I that I um. That I had to listen to, and and I actually, I, yeah, I said to Todd like I was like, you know, if you're looking for this kind of score, I'm probably not the right person. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he was very clear that you know this was not the direction yeah. that that the because this was like I think our first conversation that we had, and I was like, yeah, I was like, if we're doing like an action film, like I'm not really sure that, that you know I can try, but I'm probably not you know going to be the best fit to do it, but. Um, but uh, no, but it was it was clear from the beginning that that was not the film that was being told. And Absolutely, it was, um, yeah. And it is very much like a, a standalone film. You know, it's it's definitely like it's it's not. You know, it's it's not really a part of the whole. Kind yeah, of it's kind of disconnected from that genre. universe and yeah. everything, which is a compliment. It's a good thing. It's so yeah, contained yeah. and yeah. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I think, you know, again, it should. Um, you know, people are probably going to have strong ideas about that like either either way you know if it's a, if that's a good or a bad thing but i think you know it's it's a it's definitely like a really um uh interesting way of looking at that character i yeah. think and, and uh, as i was saying before with uh, um you know with with in, in music or in films like you know it should just be a way of you know free free expression and free communication sure. it's definitely like a, um, a really interesting way of looking at that character I yeah think. um so, so kind of like uh so i mean congratulations of course first of all for joke i mean it's getting acclaim and 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 so much word of mouth and of course everyone's excited to see it so just congrats yeah. on on Thank that you. Um, Thank but you. before we wrap up i, I kind of want to ask a few kind of general approach questions mm -hmm. um i always like to ask composers i know it's going to be of course different for every project but yeah. Where does the first note come from? Where does that like spark? Where do you kind of gravitate towards? I know you, you mentioned Ch for Chernobyl, you went recording with, with Joker. You kind of wrote based off the script. But do mm -hmm. you do you like to read the script first? Do you like to watch a first cut? Do you like to talk to the director? What's kind of the first thing you like to do that kind of gets that first note out of your head? Yeah, I think I I like to, if if possible, I I prefer coming in before they start. Um, shooting mm. because I um, I uh, um, I like it the most when when I have a bit of a you know clean slate yeah. and I'm I'm not completely you know bound to the aesthetics of, of what's being shot or, or you know it's it's um, you're of course like so influenced by by um, you know a first cut is already so far into the process so by that time you know it's it's right. uh, so many decisions have been made already. Right, so, right. so it's uh, for me, it's a much more fun and creative um, way to start from the, you know just when when things are being formed, and you can actually be a part of the dialogue of, of yeah. what is being created. You know, that's definitely. Um, it seems like you got to do with the Joker, which is yes, like a dream exactly. situation. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, and Chernobyl as well, because I started yeah. I started working on the music before they shot mm -hmm. as well. So, 
um, so even though they didn't play the music on set, like I was really working on the music before before anything was was edited or, or, wow, or shot. Yeah. So, so the dialogue was already going with yeah. the, with, the, with the filmmakers. So, um, so that's yeah, that's definitely been a really, really wonderful position to be in with these with these two last projects. For sure. And um, to kind of end things, if you could pick one job on a movie, not composer, yeah. to give it a try, maybe yeah. for a day, like a costume designer or a set designer or actor, director, what would you do? What would, what would you pick other than composer? Writer, or stunt driver? <laughs> I'd probably just be the gaffer. The gaffer? Yeah, because yeah. I just like, I love gaffer. <laughs> just like if you come into my house or in my studio... <laughs> Pretty much everything is like, you know, gaffer together. <laughs> so, gaff so tape to, everywhere. For that to be your job, just to get that, I mean, I don't know, they, they probably do a lot of other oh, stuff. Yeah, but they, I just, you know, you just imagine, you know, you just imagine this person going around like taping everything together. I, I think that sounds wonderful. I, I totally, I totally be the gaffer. <laughs> well, that's a perfect answer. And uh, Hilder, thank you so much for sitting and chatting. It's so lovely to talk with you and congrats on everything. Thank you. Thank you.